Company targeting on LinkedIn is one of the best features that the platform has to offer, at least in my opinion. Because LinkedIn is the social media platform focused on work, people are pretty eager to give their information and it's usually accurate, which allows you as the advertiser to target the right types of companies. But a new feature that LinkedIn has recently released could help company targeting be even better. So today I wanna to walk you through what the new companies tab is, show you how it works, and along the way, talk about some ideas that you might be able to use in your account. For today's video, I'm gonna be in one of our live client accounts, which for those of you who know the drill, means that there's gonna be a decent amount that's gonna be blurred out today, but you'll still be able to get the understanding of how this company's tab works and the ideas that we have for how you can use it in your account. So first, just navigating to the new companies tab. We're gonna go over here into the left-hand navigation. We're gonna click plan, and then underneath audiences, you'll see companies as the new tab. And once the page loads, you'll see a table that'll look something like this. Now, it might not look like much to start with, and yes, we have to blur out all the company names, but you should still get an idea of what's happening. So let's start to go through what this table tells you. First, under company, you can see that there are 166,000 companies here. This list will be unique to whatever account you're in and will count all of the companies that have had some engagement with the account that's here, whether it's organic or paid, this account specifically has had 166,000 companies interact with it in one way, shape, or form. Now going from left to right, we're gonna go through each of these stats. The next one is engagement level. You can see here that it's on a range of very low to very high, and you can have these little color bars here, but the engagement level is calculated by adding the paid engagement rate and number of organic engagements. It's then normalized and then compared to all of the different accounts across LinkedIn to give you some understanding of whether this company is engaging on a low, medium, or high level with the company associated with this ad account. After that, we start going through some metrics that might feel familiar. Organic impressions. These are the number of visits to your LinkedIn company page. It is not an impression of an organic post. It is only visits of the company page. Organic engagements are the number of interactions with page posts and product pages from your LinkedIn company page. Then we start to get into the paid stats. You've got paid impressions, which are the impressions of your actual ads. This is associated more with the traditional understanding of impressions. Paid clicks, again, any of the clicks on your ads. And then paid engagements are going to be the sum of all social actions, whether it's the click to your landing page, click to the LinkedIn page, any of the other actions that you can engage with on a paid ad, whether they are the chargeable clicks or the free clicks. So these are all of the engagements that we would see. It even goes so far as to give you the number of paid leads from your ads account. These are going to be all of the lead gen forms that you would get. So you will see, at least for this one, we do have one company that has a lead form associated with it. And any of the other companies in this list that have submitted a lead to this ad account will also show up here. We might talk about that a little bit more in a second. And if we keep scrolling to the right, the last set of stats that we get are going to be company size, company industry, their headquarters, and then company lists. So company size, industry, and the headquarters are all pretty standard. Those are all things that you can target within the LinkedIn platform. But then company lists is a pretty cool piece because this account has lots of different lists associated with it that we've created from many different campaigns. And if a company shows up in a list, or as you can see here, we don't need to blur anything out because there are multiple lists, you'll see how many lists this company will show up in. For this account, Multiple lists make sense because we've had things rotate out throughout different months, quarters, we've redone lists, all that good stuff. So this isn't a red flag to me. But if you're curious about why you have a company showing up in multiple lists, all you need to do is click on the list item here and it'll open up a window that shows you the list of lists that this company shows up in. So you can spot check, make sure you have everything accurate and there's no problems. Pretty handy option that we've got there. So that's how you're gonna read the table overall. But then as you'll see here on the right, there's this huge list of filters that they have available. So let's scroll this all the way back over to the left. Now, the first thing you can do is adjust the date of activity. It's gonna default you to the longest date range, which is 90 days. But if you wanna look back at the last 60, 30, or seven, you can narrow the date range and the performance metrics, the engagement level, all of that will change based on time frame. 
I don't personally care what this time frame is, so I'll just leave it at 60. And then going down the list, there's a few cool things we can do. So first is gonna be this company lists. Let's open this up. Here you can see that we're defaulted to all company lists that are in the account. But if I were to open this drop down, I apologize, all the names are blurred, but you can see the check boxes next to them. I can start to check and select into one of the company lists that we have. If I click apply, it will show me just the 60 companies that are in this list, and then it'll show me all the performance metrics for those companies in the designated date range that I have. This is where I think this tool gets really neat is that not only are we just getting insights into all of the companies we're targeting, we're actually looking into very specific company lists. And if you have lots of different lists associated with the same effort, let's say each of these top five lists was for the same effort, you can group all of them together and see all of the stats for all of the 517 companies that were in those five company lists. But that's not the only filter that we have that I think is extra cool. If I come in here, I can just uncheck all these, clear it all out. I really like this second option, which is for campaign. So if we come in here, again, it's gonna to default to all of your campaigns. But if I open the drop down, now you can see that we have the list of campaigns that are running in this account. I'm going to click one that I know should do okay. And now I have the stats for the 3,500 or so companies that have been targeted by this campaign. The part that I really like about this is this campaign does not target a company list. It targets just general demographic information on the LinkedIn platform. So now I can see not just how my campaign is performing, but how individual companies within this campaign are performing, whether they have high engagement, low engagement, if they've submitted any lead forms, anything like that. I can filter this campaign's performance by company and understand how each of them is engaging with our content. For now, I'm just gonna clear this out, default back to all campaigns. But then each of the different metrics that we looked at for the column headers can also be a filter. So you can filter based on how much people have engaged, whether it's very low, low, all the way up to very high. You can filter based on the number of organic engagements, the number of organic impressions, the number of paid engagements, the number of paid impressions, paid clicks and paid leads. You get the gist of it, as well as the company size and country of the companies in the specific list. Now I'm not gonna go through and click a bunch of these to show you, but at a high level, just know that each of these filters will compound on itself. So if you have a campaign applied here and a filter for engagement, you will get a list of only the companies who engaged with that campaign and at whatever engagement level. So all of these filters over here on the right are going to be and statements. They all will compound and narrow the audience that we have here. Now down at the bottom, there are a couple additional fields that are not part of the stats that we have, and that's because they are an include and exclude filter. These are gonna operate just like company targeting in the campaign builder. If I want to, I can come in here and type in any company name, and it will populate all of the associated brands with Nike, since that's who I typed in. So if I want to include this company here, I now have Nike in here. I can then search by company name and it will filter for that stat within the company list because now they are for sure added here and we can see the engagement level, organic impressions, paid impressions, all that good stuff. There's also the opportunity to exclude companies down here and you can do this just to get a company out of the list. So if I wanted to exclude Nike, I could add that company in here and it would be then excluded from the list. It still shows the stats, but it should exclude it moving forward. And there's a reason that we might want to use these exclusions. I'm actually gonna go ahead and just remove this filter for now. And the reason you might wanna use exclusions is because you can actually do a few things with the company list that you've created here. The first thing you can do is you can actually save it as a company list. If you click save as a company list here, it'll have a name, and then you can have the list either be dynamic based on people who either qualify or disqualify from the filters you've applied here. For example, if you're only targeting people who have medium to high engagement, if a company goes down to very low, they'll no longer be part of this audience and you can continually rotate this list or you can set it up as a static list and include only this one-time view of this company list. In my opinion, this dynamic list is pretty awesome, specifically for the engagement level folks or even just think of people who've submitted a lead gen form. If they've submitted one in the last 90 days, maybe you wanna retarget them with a follow-up conversion action, but you don't wanna do it after a certain time period, but you wanna make sure that new users are in it. So there's plenty of ways that you can use this dynamic list to target people in your campaigns. 
Now, if I were to give this a name and click save, it would show right up in the audience manager and I'd be able to apply it to a campaign just like any other company list. But one other thing you can do is you can export the list. I've already gone ahead and done that for an example and I've hidden the company name, which is in column A. You can see it's very small over there, but you'll see here that the stats that we have are limited to only paid impressions, clicks, engagements, and leads. You can see the engagement level, but we don't get organic stats. But the part I think is kind of cool is that if you need to do any sort of company list or database enrichment, you can match up your company page URL on LinkedIn with the company name. So this is a way for you to get data out of LinkedIn in bulk and add it to your CRM. So later on you have the company profile URL. If your salespeople need that, or if you need to use it for matching better to a company list that you're uploading to LinkedIn later on, you have the actual matched company page URL kind of handy in my opinion. So overall this page might not look like much, but I really think there's a ton going on in here, whether it's understanding how individual companies are performing, from either an organic or a paid standpoint, getting an understanding of what company lists they're in and making sure that they're showing up in the right ones, or actually creating a dynamic company list based on some of the metrics that are in this tab can be a real benefit to some ad campaigns out there that are struggling in one way, shape or form. So while this company's tab might not revolutionize everything you're doing in LinkedIn, definitely think it has a place in just about every ad account that we've ever managed. So hopefully this rundown has made you see how this new tool can be useful in your accounts. But if you have any additional questions about this company's tab, or anything else on the LinkedIn ads platform, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.